and welcome to episode 5 of my YouTube channel. My name is Camille Seaman and I am here on the cliffs of Kilkee in County Clare, Ireland. Today, especially for Tracy who commented on the last video, and I'll put a link to that up in the description, asking to see and learn more about different types of icebergs. If you have not pressed the like or subscribe button to any of my videos, I am now at the point where I'm going to ask you to do that because I will not get traction with these videos if more people don't subscribe or like the videos. Uh, you don't have to watch them, <laughs> but please do like and subscribe and that will help me a lot and I would appreciate it greatly. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Getting started with the story of icebergs, I felt only right to start from the top. And the top is a glacier. A glacier is very different from an iceberg. A glacier starts out at the top of a mountain or a high plateau, uh, such as in the case of Antarctica. So Antarctica, if you look at the South Pole, is actually quite high in elevation. And as the snow falls there and accumulates over time, many, many thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, it starts to... <laughs> it compresses on top of this plateau, or in Greenland, a mountain. And the, the force of that, the gravitational force of that, starts to make it move like an ice river. And this ice river literally gouges out mountains, making these beautiful U-shaped valleys that you see in Greenland or, or even here in Ireland. All of Ireland was once covered by ice sheets. So this glacier slowly moves down to the coast. And in the case of Antarctica, it is so big that they have things called ice shelves. And an ice shelf is basically a... <laughs> it may look like it's a warm sunny day here, but it's actually quite cold and windy. I will do my best to explain to you about icebergs and hopefully the wind co will cooperate. I'm just going to tuck this away and hope that that helps. So, uh, as I was saying, a glacier starts out as snowflakes that fall onto a high plateau, as in the case of Antarctica, or mountaintops in Greenland and other places like Alaska. And slowly over time, the weight and compression of those snowflakes becomes ice that ice starts to move like a frozen river with the force of gravity. And it will flow all the way to the coast. And in the case of Antarctica, something very special happens where ice shelves are formed. And what is an ice shelf? An ice shelf is basically a glacier that has so much momentum and mass that when it reaches the coastline, it doesn't calve off and become an iceberg. Instead, what happens is it continues with all of its mass to push out into the sea. And in the case of the world's largest ice shelf, the Ross Ice Shelf, I was lucky enough not only to see it from a ship, but also fly up and land on top of it. And I'll show a picture of that here. And so the Ross Ice Shelf is the largest ice shelf in the world. It is literally the size of the state of Texas, or if you're European, the size of the country of France. So ice shelves then can fracture or calve into some of the world's largest icebergs. And here I want to start to talk about icebergs because now you know the difference between a glacier and an iceberg because literally an iceberg has to be calved off of a glacier in order to become an iceberg. 
there are many different types of icebergs and that's what I'm going to talk about now. In Antarctica, the main distribution force of snow is actually wind. And what the wind does is it acts like it's laying down layers and layers of snow until it looks like a cake with different visible layers. And those, when you see them break off of, for example, an ice shelf, you can see those layers. And those really big, massive icebergs are called sometimes tabular icebergs because they look like a big flat table. Now, when I say these are big, I mean these are bigger than some countries, these icebergs. And you can imagine, for us on a ship, it might take us days to sail around it. And it, they're also quite dangerous because not only are they two to 300 feet or up to 100 meters high, but they can also be many hundreds of feet or hundreds of meters deep in the water. And you don't see that. So our ships tend to have to stay quite a ways away because any minute one of those huge, massive, I mean, the size of a building or larger can break off from underneath. And if your ship is there, it's not gonna be a great place to be. So tabular icebergs can be some of the largest icebergs. And any iceberg that is visible from space gets a name, it gets a number. Like one of my favorites that happened back in 2004, I wanna say, was B-15. And then B-15 moved around the Southern Ocean for a very long time, years even, slowly breaking up into other pieces, which then got names as long as they were visible from space, such as B-15A, B, C, etc. So that's the largest icebergs. Now we're going to talk about some of the smallest ones. One of the more notorious ones and ominous sounding are the growlers. And growlers are very dense ice that has very little air in it. And so these are really the last sometimes remnants of massive icebergs. And they are so dense, so solid and heavy. I mean, th this will rip your ship apart like a can opener. And they are dangerous because they are so dense, they sit low in the surface of the water. So it's very hard to, to see them as you're sailing along. And I, maybe that's why they're called growlers. I don't, I would be really curious to find out why. If you know why uh, these were called growlers, please, in the comments. The second type of iceberg is called a bergy bit. And a bergy bit is basically any iceberg that is house-sized or smaller. Now, you might say, well, houses can be pretty big. So I think they're just thinking of like an average-sized house, not some mansion or, or anything like that. Just a house size or smaller is called a bergy bit. And I'll show you here a picture of the bergy bits. And those can be quite lovely to meander around and through uh, they're, they're on a small boat where, where you can get up close to these relatively. And then from how size are larger, they get classified into different shapes. So there is a wedge-shaped iceberg. And basically a wedge-shaped iceberg is an iceberg that has, was a table and then has partially uh, submerged or somehow shifted. So now it looks like a triangle shape. And I'll show that here. And then there are beautiful types of icebergs called pinnacle icebergs. And pinnacle icebergs are just what they sound like. They have these very lovely spires. And I, I really, I've been so fortunate to have the opportunity to photograph so many different kinds of icebergs, both in the Arctic and Antarctic. So I will show these to you as I'm talking. 
And then uh, from a wedge, a pinnacle, there are, so, uh, there are also what are called dome-shaped icebergs. Icebergs are very dynamic. Within their lifespan as an iceberg, they will constantly be rolling and melting and shifting and breaking. So their, their shape and form is constantly changing. And a dome shape is, is one of those where you can see the sea waves have rolled over and created this lovely dome and I'll show a picture of that as well. I was lucky enough, for example, in Greenland, in East Greenland, to photograph not only a pinnacle iceberg, but something called a dry dock iceberg. And dry dock icebergs basically have their own swimming pools or, or bays within them. And they are some of the most beautiful because once that water is held against the ice, it usually has some incredible electric blue or teal color and yeah dry docks are some of my favorites to photograph with with a pinnacle shape the two final types of icebergs that i can tell you about that i've had personal experience with are something called a blocky iceberg and those uh, tend to be high uh, maybe a tabula iceberg that has split and it now looks more like a building where it's got great height and may not have a lot of width. And, and then the other is something called an ice island. And ice islands, they can be, and these, I, I want to say, these are all freshwater icebergs. This is not sea ice. An ice island can have sort of a blocky or tabular shape, but it doesn't have that deep ice that's underneath it. And sometimes that happens, they're called ice islands. People who live in Newfoundland have a lot of experience with icebergs and the potential problems that they cause for shipping lanes, which is the way that they oftentimes get their goods delivered to them. And Almost all of the icebergs that come through Newfoundland or by them are calved off of West Greenland and travel down and end up in that area. A whole industry has been created that will tow icebergs out of the way and will also collect icebergs and if you ever are in uh, that area of Canada, you can buy water that has been bottled from icebergs and you can also buy beer that has been brewed with iceberg water. If you have any more questions or comments, please place them below. I answer as many as I can and I promise if you have a good enough question, I will make a video about it. I hope that that has given a little bit more information about the differences in icebergs. And uh, with that, I will leave you with this video. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.